Okay, in this video we'll look at how to find the integrals of the six trig functions. Now, normally students will do this. They'll go, well, hey, haven't we already done this? Didn't we already find uh, integrals for the trig functions? And the answer is sort of. Um, what we did was this. this is in an earlier part of the course, most students should be here. Um, you had the derivatives of the six trig functions, and here they are right here. So here's the derivative of the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And they turned out to be these values right here. So you should be familiar with those. Now, when we found the antiderivatives of these, uh, we did the following. We really just found the antiderivatives of whatever was over here on the right-hand side. So if the derivative of the sine was the cosine, then the integral of the cosine turned into the sine. Um, if the derivative of the cosine turned into the sine, then the integral of the sine turned into the cosine, and so on. <clears throat> and then for these, they were actually just the opposite, too. If the derivative of the tangent was the secant squared, then the integral of the secant squared turned back into the tangent. But there's a problem on this, and it, you do have some integrals here, but you've got like the integrals of the secant squared and the cosecant squared, and so on. What we don't have at this point is this. Um, we would like to come in and find the integrals of these right here. So what I want is the integrals of these four trig functions. You can kind of divide this chart up like this. Let's just go from here and we'll just sort of put a line across it. So from here all the way across to right over here. So here are the first two. You've got the integral of the cosine, you've got the integral of sine, but you're missing these four. Now, you do have the integral of the secant squared, but remember, what that is, is you'd want the four basic trig functions, not these right here. So here's what we'd like to do. Rather than finding the integral of these things, we'd like to, let's get rid of this, and rather than finding the integral of the secant squared, we want the integral of the tangent. So we'll do is come over here, and we want the integral of the tangent right here. Rather than the cosecant squared, we want the cotangent. And so we'll scrap that one, put the cotangent in here. We don't want the secant tangent, we want the secant, so scrap that one and put the secant in here. And then finally, cosecant cotangent we don't want, and we want to replace that with the cosecant. So those are the ones that we want. So really what we're going to do is this. We're just going to get rid of this entire, all four of these right here, we will zap and we're going to replace them with the integrals of these, and when you combine them with these two right here, you'll have the integral of all six of the trig functions. So let's start by just getting rid of this part right here. Let's get rid of these four that we're not really interested in. And so we've got a blank here. Now we'd like to replace that with the integral of these four trig functions right here. So when you do that, it's going to look like this. So here's what we're looking for. If you know the derivative of the tangent and the cotangent, now you want the integral of these things. <clears throat> now, up till this point in the course, you haven't been able to find these because there was a rule that you needed, and we've just completed that, and we'll talk about it in just a second. So, the problem on this one is that to get the antiderivatives of the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, you need that 1 over u rule. So, just to remind you of what that is, it looks like this. So the antiderivative of 1 over u turns into the natural log of u plus c. So this is the rule that you're going to have to use to get these last four. So let's go back and just real quickly, let's go ahead and put the answer up and see what the solutions look like, and then we'll talk about where they came from. So each one of these integrals would actually be equal to this. So the integral of the tangent turns out to be the negative of the natural log of the cosine. The integral of the cotangent is natural log of the sine, and so on. The integral of the secant turns out to be the natural log of the secant plus the tangent. <clears throat> now, the thing to notice on this is this. All four of these uh, have a natural log in them. And the only way you can use an integral to get a natural log, it has to start, and I think I'll put it in here again, it has to start with this 1 over u rule. So 1 over u gets you to natural log, so it should be a hint that to derive these, at some point you're going to have to work with this 1 over u. So we'll go back and take a quick look at them again. So all those are natural log. At some point, all these must involve a 1 over u. Now let's do this. Um, we'll <clears throat> start on, in this video, we'll do two things. We'll derive the tangent integral, and we'll derive the secant integral, and then let you work on these two right here. So first of all, 
let's take a look at where does this tangent integral come from and why does it turn out to be this right here. So looking at that example, um, let's start with this one. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what we'll do on this, this on this first one, if you're going to find the integral of the tangent, you really need to use a uh, trig identity. So just a reminder, <clears throat> uh, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So we'll replace this with sine over cosine dx. Now it's going to involve u substitution on these, and again you have to wind up with a 1 over u somewhere. So what I would suggest you guys do is this, is make this be the antiderivative. Take this sine and scoot it off to the right, which will give you this, 1 over the cosine of x. And I'm going to take that sine, move it off to the right here, and I'll have the sine of x dx. So again, using u substitution, what I need to do, I need to get rid of this part right here and replace it with a u. So I'll do my u substitution right over here. So I'm going to let u be equal to what's in the denominator of this thing, because again, pick your u so that its derivative gets rid of the other thing. Well, the derivative of the cosine will get rid of the sine, so I'm going to let u uh, be equal to the cosine of x. Now, I'll find the derivative of that, so the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to, and just a reminder on your derivative rules, um, the derivative of the cosine is the negative of the sine. So this is going to turn into the negative of the sine of x. And again, I'll then make du be equal to the negative of the sine of x dx. Now again, I, I need a sine of x dx. I don't need the negative here, so I'll move it to the other side. So that gives me a negative du is equal to uh, sine of x dx. And all this is, this is just plain old u substitution. Well, I needed a sine of x dx. I've got a sine of x dx right here. So I can substitute the negative du. And again, like always, we'll stick a little box around this just to <clears throat> kind of isolate it. So there. So this is the u substitution right here. So there was your u substitution. Now, back to the original problem, what that gets you to is this. This would be equal to the integral It'll be 1 over, but remember, cosine of x is equal to u, so this is going to be 1 over u. Um, and you're going to replace the sine of x dx with what it's equal to, which is the negative du. Okay, next up, go ahead and bring the negative outside the integral. So that'll be equal to the negative of the integral of 1 over u du. And then also, just a reminder again, um, the integral of 1 over u du turns into the natural log. That's where the natural log comes from. So we'll go back to our problem, and this will turn into, then, the negative of the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And the final step is just to do this. Uh, let's go to here. Um, so the final step is... Uh, u is equal to the cosine of x, so I'll replace this with natural log of the cosine of x plus c, and there you go. So you started with the integral of the tangent of x turns into the negative of the natural log of the cosine, and let's go back and look at the rules, and you'll see where that came from. So the integral of the tangent turn into the negative of the natural log of cosine. Now we'll do one more of these. Let's do a secant because secant's got a little trick that's not particularly obvious at first. So let's try that. <clears throat> Again, here's what the secant looks like. Um, when we did the tangent one, we found a, uh, we used a trig identity. So just a reminder, the first step in the tangent one was to use a trig identity, which got you to this one over u rule. But it's not so clear in this one. Um, if you start with secant, you've got to do it a little bit differently. So what we'll do is make this be equal to the integral of, here's the secant of x, 
Now I'm going to do something here. I think I'll put it in red so it kind of stands out. There's just this is strictly a little algebra trick that will allow you to get to uh, that one over u rule. So I'm going to multiply this thing by, and I'll start here and I'll go over here and put this in, um, and it looks like this. And the secret is this: you're going to multiply it by the secant of x, secant of x, plus the tangent of x divided by the secant of x plus the tangent of x. So what you've got is uh, secant, secant x plus tangent x over secant x plus tangent x. And uh, now by doing this, uh, secant x is like multiplying by 1, because you've got the same thing in the top and the same thing in the bottom. Now, it, normally it's not real obvious why you would want to do that. And the main reason you want to do it is that it will allow you to get a u that you can get rid of the derivative. So the whole purpose is to set this thing up for u substitution, and it just makes it work out. So the next step would be to do this. We'll go ahead and take this thing and distribute this. So we'll put it down here uh, and make it be, now what you're going to do is distribute this and this. Multiply these two together, and you'd get the integral of uh, the secant squared of x plus the secant x tangent x all divided by um, the secant x plus the tangent x on the bottom, dx. So when you distribute, it turns into that. Now again, to make it look like a 1 over u problem, I would the next thing I would do would be to do this. Go ahead and make this be the integral of 1 over what's in the bottom. All I'm going to do here is just take this part in the top and move it off to the side. So this is going to be the secant x plus the tangent x. And then in parentheses here, I'll take this top part and just scoot it off the side. So the secant squared of x plus the secant x tangent x. And the whole thing dx. Now, the whole... The, question always pops up, well, why in the world would you ever multiply it by the secant plus the tangent? And this is why right here. Because you've got it set up now in a way, which if you make the choice of u, in your u substitution, you're going to want to try to get rid of this part right here in u substitution. And it turns out you'll pick your u so that you can do that. Well, if you let u be the denominator of this thing right here, the derivative of this will get rid of this, and you'll wind up with a 1 over u problem. So let's go over here and do the u substitution. So what I'm going to do is let u be equal to the secant x plus the tangent x. Now I want to find the derivative of that. So the derivative of u with respect to x. And again, just a reminder on your uh, derivative rules, you want the derivative of the secant. Well, the derivative of the secant is equal to the secant times the tangent. So this is going to be the secant x times the tangent x. And you've got this plus. Now you need the derivative of the tangent. Let's go back and look at the rules again. The derivative of the tangent is equal to the secant squared. So this is going to be the secant squared of x. Now take the dx and move it over to this side. So that gives you the differential of u would be equal to the secant x tangent x plus the secant squared of x, and this dx now is over here. And again, we'll put this in parentheses. Now, looking back over here, these two now match up. You needed a secant squared plus a secant tangent, and you've got it right here. So this right here matches up with this, and you can replace it with that. So there is your u substitution. So again, we'll put a little box around this thing just to isolate it. So here is the, this part right here is the u substitution. And what that does to the integral would be this. The whole thing turns into the integral of 1 over u. And all this is going to be replaced with a du. So it actually turns into a pretty simple integral. Now again, just a reminder, um, you've got an integral of 1 over u. 
and using this rule, the integral of 1 over u is equal to the natural log. So we'll go back to the problem, and that's going to be equal to um, the natural log of u plus c. And now you're one step away from being done. Make that be the natural log of the absolute value of. And in place of u, put what it's equal to up here. So this is equal to the secant of x plus the tangent of x. Um, and then tack on your plus c. So that's going to be the final answer right there. So again, the <clears throat> integral of the secant of x turns into the natural log of the secant x plus the tangent x. And if we go back and look at the rules, that's where it, so the antiderivative of the secant of x turns into this one right here. So what we did in this video, um, we derived the integral of the tangent. So the integral of the tangent, and we derived the integral of the secant, and then I'll leave to you guys to, to do this one. But when you derive the cotangent one, it's done almost exactly like the tangent one. And when you derive the cosecant one, it's done all using the same trick that you used in the secant one. Uh, so I'll let you do those and you should be able to come up with those. But that's now you've got all six of the trig derivatives and notice that four of them were turned into a natural log because of this one over u problem. So uh, the one over u needs at least the natural log. So anyway, there's all six of the trig derivatives.